What happened to the wives of the fallen angels? In the book of Enoch, the fallen angels were known as the watchers. And when the daughters of men began to multiply on the face of the earth, this group of fallen angels took for themselves wives. According to the book of Enoch, they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Now as a result of their actions, the fallen angels and their children, the giants, were severely punished by God. Enoch is described as being hidden, meaning he was removed from the ordinary human realm and was in a special relationship with divine beings. His interactions were with the watchers, the fallen angels, and the holy ones, the angels of heaven. And so he played a role as a mediator between the divine and human realms. The watchers, understanding that Enoch was the scribe of righteousness, called him to communicate with God in an attempt to ask for forgiveness. The watchers were accused of defiling themselves by leaving their holy eternal place, heaven, and engaging in forbidden relationships with human women mirroring the behaviors of earthly beings rather than maintaining their angelic purity. So in response to their message, Enoch gave the Watchers a message in return. The punishment pronounced on the Watchers was severe. They would have no peace or forgiveness for their sins. They would witness the death and destruction of their beloved children, the Nephilim, and would grieve over their loss forever and they would not receive mercy or peace. So the watchers convinced Enoch to draw up a petition for them so that he might read that petition before the Lord. So Enoch sat down by the river and began reading through this petition, eventually falling asleep. While he was sleeping, he had a dream. And when he woke up, he went back to the watchers to reprimand them. Now later, the holy angels of heaven began to show Enoch visions. They showed him the fate of the world, what would become of the Nephilim, and he was shown what would become of the wives of the fallen watchers. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. One of the passages from the Book of Enoch is a depiction of a divine encounter and the judgment placed upon the Watchers. The passage begins with Enoch being in the presence of a great fire, symbolizing God's glory. Surrounded by countless divine beings, God stands alone, needing no counsel. The Holy Ones closest to him remain perpetually in his presence. In this setting, Enoch lies prostrate trembling before him until God personally calls him to rise and approach. 
God addresses Enoch, reassuring him not to fear and acknowledging him as a righteous man and scribe. Enoch is then given a mission to deliver a message to the Watchers. These angels, who were originally spiritual and immortal, left their heavenly position and by taking human wives, committed a sin that corrupted their divine nature. God reprimands them for abandoning their spiritual existence and choosing to engage in the flesh. Mortal acts associated with humanity, including lust and procreation. God explains that humans were given the gift of reproduction through marriage so that they could sustain life on earth. But this was not meant for the spiritual beings of heaven. By violating this order, the Watchers not only defiled themselves, but also produced offspring, the Giants, or Nephilim, who were a hybrid of spirits and flesh. These Giants, based on their origins, would become evil spirits upon their death, destined to dwell on earth and cause destruction. The passage describes these spirits as malevolent entities that oppress and bring chaos to humanity. They are perpetually hungry and thirsty, yet never satisfied, and their existence is marked by a relentless drive to cause harm and instigate conflict. Now later, in another passage, the archangel Uriel reveals to Enoch the fate of the fallen angels who sinned by taking human women as their wives. These angels, who have connected themselves with humanity in a forbidden manner, are now responsible for corrupting mankind. Their spirits, capable of assuming many different forms, continue to defile humanity up to this very day by leading people astray, causing them to worship demons as gods. This corruption is depicted as a type of moral and spiritual degradation. Uriel informs Enoch that these fallen angels will be held accountable for their transgressions. They are to remain in a state of punishment until the day of the great judgment and then will be destroyed. This day of judgment represents a decisive moment in the cosmic order where divine justice will be fully executed. and The rebellion of these angels will be brought to an end. <clears throat> also, Uriel reveals that the women who were involved with these angels will also face a transformation as a consequence of their actions. They will become sirens, mythological creatures often associated with seduction and danger, symbolizing their own corruption and the impact of their transgressions. This transformation into sirens can be interpreted as a representation of their fallen state, where they, like the angels, have crossed a boundary that has altered their nature permanently. Now what's interesting is that the origins of the sirens are rooted in Greek mythology. They are generally considered to be the daughters of the river god, Achilles, and one of the muses. Originally, sirens were companions of Persephone, the daughter of Demeter, the goddess of the harvest. According to myth, when Persephone was abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld, Demeter cursed the sirens, transforming them into creatures that were part bird, part woman. This transformation was said to be a punishment for failing to prevent Persephone's abduction. And in another version of the story, it was said that they were turned into sirens to help with the search for Persephone. When you read all the different versions of stories about sirens, it becomes rather clear that nobody really knew what they were talking about when it came to their origins. One story says that there were three of them, another says five. Their descriptions and names change, so it's hard to solidify this myth. For example, in early Greek art and literature, sirens were depicted as bird women, with the body of a bird and the head of a woman. Over time, especially in later traditions, their appearance shifted to more human-like forms, but they often retained some bird characteristics, such as wings or bird-like legs. 
The most famous depictions of sirens comes from the works of Homer, particularly in the Odyssey, where Odysseus encounters them. In that context, the sirens sing so beautifully that no man can resist their call, leading those who hear them to crash their ships on rocky shores. And this characteristic fits, because if they were originally the wives of the fallen angels, they too found these women to be irresistible. The symbolism here is the dangers of temptation and the allure of things that seem beautiful, but are ultimately destructive. Even though it was the watchers who apparently came down and took wives without their consent. In some accounts, sirens are associated with mermaids, blending elements of both mythological beings. Over time, especially in the medieval and renaissance periods, sirens came to be depicted more like mermaids with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a fish. In literature and art, sirens have been used to explore themes of seduction, danger, the duality of beauty and destruction. They are often portrayed as symbols of the irresistible and often fatal attraction that leads one to ruin. And throughout history and even in daily life, we see that this can be very true. Think about all the great men of the Bible who had come to ruin because they chose a woman over God. Adam is probably the greatest example of this. King Solomon was another one. I'm sure many of you can testify to this as well. It just doesn't have to be applied to women. It could be anything that a person finds desirable. Status, money, power. In the context of the Book of Enoch, the reference to women who shall become sirens likely draws on the symbolic aspects of the myth, representing a transformation into beings associated with temptation, danger, or spiritual corruption. The Book of Enoch was likely composed somewhere between the 2nd and 3rd century BC, but during a time period when Jewish thought was heavily influenced by Hellenistic or Greek culture. The incorporation of Greek terms into Jewish texts was not uncommon during that time. The term sirens could have been introduced into the text by translators who were familiar with Greek mythology and used the word to convey a concept that was somewhat relatable in both traditions. Namely, beings associated with seduction, danger, and spiritual corruption. The Book of Enoch exists in several versions, with the most complete version being the Ethiopic, as part of the Ethiopian Orthodox canon. The use of sirens may be because of the influence of Greek or other ancient cultures on the translators or scribes who preserved the text. It's possible that an original term with a similar meaning in the original language of the text was translated as sirens in later versions because it was a concept that made sense to the translators or their audience. And when you look at the Book of Enoch and you look at Greek mythology, you can definitely see that there are common themes. It makes you wonder how much of this siren and mermaid tale is based on truth. And if they did exist in some form, are they still out there, waiting for judgment? Well, that is all for today, and there is much more to come. I do have a recommended video for today, more on sirens. Watch that video, it will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video, and in the description and pinned comment below. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out, subscribe so that you can be notified of any new videos uploaded everyone have a great day take care and as always friends stay awake stay aware stay safe and i'll talk to you all soon